How lovely is Christmas with boughs in the hall when bells ringle jingle and friends come to call how lovely is Christmas with joy on the wing while under your window the carolers sing God rest ye be merry give peace while you may remember the child who was born on this day how lovely is Christmas with songs in the air Right, Merry Christmas, dear friends everywhere. You know, there have been almost 2,000 Christmases since that first one so many years ago. But the one I'm thinking about right now took place more than 100 years ago in the dark wilderness of western Kentucky. <laughs> this cabin all by itself at the edge of a forest. Next to the cabin was a clearing in the woods, but the clearing wasn't near big enough because the father had only one axe and he had to do all the chopping by himself. He had a wife, though, and a little boy. His name was young Jethro. Young Jethro was trying, you know, to help as best he could, but how many trees can a small boy chop down in one day? <laughs> Not very many. He's lucky if he gets a few bushes, especially if you don't have an axe of your own. So young Jethro used to say to his pa, I sure wish I had me a magic axe. I'd pitch in there and I'd chop away an acre or two in no time at all. Then we could have a fair-sized garden patch and maybe some space for an apple tree. That's what young Jethro dreamed most about, an axe and an apple. Is that all you want, an axe and an apple, his pa asked him. Well, said young Jethro, I sure got me a hankering for something else, but I hate to be asking for things that are hard to get. Well, his father didn't ask him any further, but the thing that young Jethro was really hankering for was a buckskin jacket. You know, one of them with fringes on it. Sometimes, like when he thought there was nobody around, you could hear him singing to himself like this. An axe, an apple, and a buckskin jacket. Oh, what a sight they be. An axe, an apple, and a buckskin jacket. That's all I want for me. Well, you don't want much Just a little bitty bit I'll say you don't want much Just a little bitty bit You don't want much Just a little bitty bit So what do you think you're gonna get? An axe, an apple, and a buckskin jacket Take one and two, make three An axe, an apple, and a buckskin jacket under a Christmas tree Oh, you don't want much Just a little bitty bit Oh, you don't want much Just a little bitty bit You don't want much Just a little bitty bit So what do you think you're gonna get? Now this cabin I told you about was so remote from any kind of a store Jethro and his pa had been so busy trying to clear out that field that well, nothing much had been done about Christmas. But long about noon of the day before Christmas, the father said to young Jethro, he said, son, you better start to get ready now. We're all going on down to the store with a few eggs and see what we can swap them for. But young Jethro, who still hadn't figured out what he's going to give his folks for Christmas, said he didn't think that he wanted to come along. Fact is, there was nothing young Jethro liked better than going down to that store, but he also wanted a chance to be alone, to to work out some kind of a surprise for his ma and pa. Well, said his father, you just do what you think best. You got your dog Pepper here for company. We'll be back before sundown anyhow. So young Jethro, he stayed behind while his ma and pa hit it out through the forest. God, what am I going to get ma and pa for Christmas, Jethro asked himself. I know what. 
I'm going to chop down all them trees and pull up all them stumps. By the time they get back, there'll be plenty of room for a garden patch. Maybe some space for an apple tree. So he grabbed hold of his paw's axe and he crossed to the first big tree. Well, the axe was too big and young Jethro was too small. All he could do was just make a few nicks in the side of that tree, hardly peel the bark off. Well, as he was chopping, a few flakes of snow began to fall. You know, evening and darkness always come sooner when it's snowing, and soon it was snowing hard, and young Jethro said to himself, Well, well Ma and Pa sure ain't going to get back before sundown. This, this snow will hold him up. So he went back to the cabin, and he waited at the window. Hours later, hours later, there was still nobody in sight. The snow had stopped, and the moon was out. The trees were bent low with the weight of the snow, and one of the biggest trees looked like a huge lumberjack with snow on his mackinac. One of the smaller trees, a kind of bushy one, looked like a man with a pack on his back. One of the trees with some icicles clinging to its branches looked like a frontiersman in a, in a buckskin jacket. The icicles kind of looked like fringes. Was he dreaming to see such things? Well, it's kind of hard to know, especially around Christmas time, when a boy is dreaming and when he's awake. Boy had a window, a dream in his heart. What's in his dreaming? A pony and cart. Boy had a window, a gleam in his eye. What makes that gleaming? A star in the sky He can't tell a soul The half of his plan Dream, little boy Scheme, little man The boy had a window If only he knew Somehow, someday, his dream will come true. All of a sudden, young Jethro thought he heard a knocking at the door. But when he opened the door, all he could see outside were a huge pair of boots. He looked up, and he saw a pair of legs, and he looked even higher, and there was a man as tall as the tallest tree. Who are you, young Jethro asked. Paul Bunyan's my name, the fellow said. I brought you an axe, a magical axe, just your size, too. Well, old Paul Bunyan reached deep into the pocket of his mackinaw, and he took out an axe. In his hands, it looked like a little bitty old hatchet. He handed it to young Jethro, and it was just the right size. That's truly a magical axe, said Paul Bunyan. It'll chop down any tree in seven strokes. You try it. Well, young Jethro looked at the axe in wonder. Gee, if it really worked, he could clear the field before his ma and pa got back, and that would be his Christmas surprise for him. He walked over to the biggest tree in the whole forest, and he began to chop. One, two, three, four, five... Six, seven. Young Jethro swung his mighty axe. That axe was mighty fine. And when he swung that mighty axe, down came a mighty pine. A timber here and a timber there. I heard young Jethro call. A timber here and a timber there, oh, see that timber fall. Young Jethro saw a mighty fir, it nearly touched the sky. Young Jethro swung his mighty axe, now hear the mighty cry. A timber here and a timber there, I heard young Jethro call. Timber here and a timber there, I see that timber fall. Timber! Timber! Young 
Jethro swung his mighty axe. Paul Bunyan showed him how. They helped to clear this land of ours, so there'd be room to plow. A timber here and a timber there, I heard young Jethro call. A timber here and a timber there, oh, see that timber fall. Well, mighty soon the cleared field looked real fine, and young Jethro thanked Paul Bunyan, and he asked him to come in and set a spell. Oh, I can't come in, Paul said. I can only put the toe of my boot through the door, but it'll get my toes warm. Do you mind? So Paul Bunyan stood outside the cabin with one foot in the doorway, and the toe of his boot stretched all the way over to the fireplace, and he and Jethro talked. Ouch! He suddenly yelled. I put it too close to the fire. He pulled his foot away so fast he almost knocked the cabin over. Careful here. Woo! Young Jethro hollered, but Paul grabbed the chimney with one hand and he steadied the walls with the other, and that way the, the cabin didn't topple over. And then away in the distance, coming closer, young Jethro heard somebody singing. They call me Johnny Appleseed. I've come to plant my seeds indeed. I've come to plant them in the ground. They'll blossom soon for miles around. Here's a seed planted deep. Seeds can earn their board and keep. Here's a seed, take good care. Soon you'll find an orchard there. An apple tree's a sheer delight. In spring, it's like a cloud of white. In summer, it's a cloud of green. Its shade'll make you feel serene. Here's a seed planted deep. Seeds can earn their board and keep. Here's a seed, take good care. Soon you'll find an orchard there. See overhead, the apples now are rosy red. You pick them, they're sweet to eat. An apple, such a wondrous treat. Here's a seed planted deep. Seeds can earn their board and keep. Here's a seed, take good care. Soon you'll find an orchard there. Soon you'll find an orchard there. Oh, my cracky, sure enough. There, right outside the cabin, stood Johnny Appleseed. A pack of apples on his back. When I heard you chopping and clearing away that field, Johnny Appleseed told him, I figured I'd better hurry out here and give you a present. He reached into his pack and he took out an apple. Now you save the seeds from this here apple, Johnny told him, and when spring comes, you plant them. Then you hope, and they'll grow into trees, and they'll bear you the nicest fruit you ever did see. <laughs> Just then, from outside the cabin, they heard somebody cry, Hey there! Anybody inside? Who is it? Young Jethro asked as he hurried to the door, crawled over the toe of Paul Bunyan's boot, and went outside. Johnny Appleseed was a scurrying along after him. There he was, Daniel Boone. And guess what he was holding in his hand for young Jethro to see? A buckskin jacket with fringes on it. Well, Daniel Boone explained how he thought young Jethro was about the best frontiers man he'd ever heard tell of. Why, clearing away all that land like that. Taking care of the cabin all by himself. And, well, he, he just had to bring him a buckskin jacket like the one he used to wear when he was a boy. I hope it fits, he said. It's kind of a magical shirt. Gives you courage. I'll try it on right away, young Jethro said. Well, it fit him just perfect. And Daniel Boone was right. It, it sure did give him courage. Just like Paul Bunyan had given him strength. And Johnny Appleseed had given him hope. Oh, boy, look how it fits, he shouted happily. Well, it pleased all of them. Paul Bunyan, Daniel Boone, and Johnny Appleseed. It pleased them mightily to see young Jethro in that jacket. Of course, it pleased Daniel Boone so much that he told Jethro the story of one of his great adventures. It went like this. <laughs> ¶¶ 
One pitch dark night on Rogers Creek, I heard a twig go snap. That was a sign the foe was near, and I was in a trap. Were you lost? No, just bewildered. Were you caught? No, just surrounded. Were you brave and were you courageous? Well, wait and see. Now, when I heard that twig go snap, I found me a holler log. I knew they'd never find me there. Besides, there was a fog. Were you lost? Nope, just bewildered. Were you caught? No, just surrounded. Were you brave and were you courageous? Well, wait and see. Now inside that log, I hid myself. I heard their feet go by. Must have been a thousand braves while I was only I. They pitched their camp around that log, and then they went to sleep. Just no chance for my escape. Those braves would hear me creep. Were you lost? Well, I was a bit bewildered. Were you caught? No, just surrounded. Were you brave and were you courageous? Well, wait and see. Now there was a mouse inside that log. That mouse began to squeak. Old Indian gave that log a kick, and he rolled it in the creek. Well, I clumb outside and I swam ashore. Thus, I got away. Those Indians never saw me once. That's why I'm here today. Was I lost? No, just bewildered. Was I caught? No, just surrounded. Was I brave and was I courageous? Well, what, what happened to the mouse? <laughs> Well, that wasn't no mouse, that was me. And that's what you call escaping by a narrow squeak. Well, of course, young Jethro thought that was just a wonderful story. He was just about to tell one of his own. And he looked up and they were all gone. All he could see in the moonlight was a big, tall tree that looked like Paul Bunyan. A smaller tree that looked like Johnny Appleseed and a real strong-looking tree with icicles on its branches that looked like Daniel Boone. Next thing it was Christmas morning, and young Jethro woke up to find himself lying on his bed in the loft of the cabin. He couldn't even remember how he got there. He felt his arm to see if he still had on the buckskin jacket. <laughs> Instead, he, he felt the flannel nightgown that he always wore. He tried not to feel disappointed, and then he climbed down the birch pole ladder, and there by the fireplace was a little Christmas tree with some shiny doodads sparkling on it. And underneath the tree, there were three presents, all wrapped up in Tinsley paper. Merry Christmas, son, his mom and pa said to him. Merry Christmas to you, he said. <laughs> you sure were sleeping sound when we finally got through that snow last night, his pa said. Blackton never got here. Well, Jethro kept staring at those three presents under the tree. Hey, how'd you like to open your presents, his father said. The first was a long green package. He opened it very slowly. He could feel a handle and he tore the paper away. It was an axe. It had a hickory handle and the blade was gleaming. The second was a small package in blue. It felt like a ball, but when he tore the paper away, he found an apple, and it was rosy red. The third package was wrapped in red. He tore the package open, and there it was, a buckskin jacket. Buckskin jacket with fringes on it, too. Oh, young Jethro could hardly speak. He went to the window, and he sneaked to look outside. The field was still there, with the trees still in need of chopping. I was going to give you a surprise, he said. I was going to clear away that whole field, but your axe was too heavy. His father smiled at him and he said, Well, maybe we can do it together now. Shouldn't take us too long with that axe you got. Well, young Jethro allowed that it wouldn't. Then we'll have a fair-sized garden patch, he said, and, and some space for an apple tree. Someday soon, his father said. Well, his mother had Christmas breakfast ready. They all sat down together. They bowed their heads in prayer. But far in the distance, young Jethro thought he could hear voices singing on the wind. And then he looked up at his mother and his father, and he smiled. How lovely is Christmas with boughs in the hall. 
When bells ringle jingle And friends come to call How lovely is Christmas With joy on the wing While under your window The carolers sing God rest ye be merry Give peace while you may Remember the child Who was born on this day How lovely is Christmas With songs in the air A bright Merry Christmas Dear friends everywhere